A long time ago I did a video on the best way to use a GoPro when scuba diving. Today I'm going to add to that with a couple more ideas. One of the most common ways is to use a tray, but I must admit it's not always the easiest thing to carry, especially if you've got a lot on already. Imagine adding a catch bag and a tray to this setup. So this tray is a homemade job with ram mount arms that hold the video light. And most importantly, you can get two hands on it for stability. Even folded down, it takes up some room. Imagine this clipped onto your BCD. Now we're 25 metres deep, approaching the back end of the J4 submarine. I apologise for the shakes and the angles. I'm hanging onto the tray with one hand while trying to navigate around these poles with the other. And now in Port Phillip Bay, outside of cray season, I've detached the light from the tray to get some footage. Next is the L bracket. I've ditched the Perspex tray, but still use the ram mount arms. It folds up a lot smaller and hangs better when clipped off to the BCD. This is the ozone wreck. We're in three metres of water just off Indianet Head in Port Phillip Bay. It's a fantastic shallow dive, a great place to train or to do a night dive. There's plenty of fish life and other things to look at here. The stability is pretty similar to the tray. Don't forget, all the shots are done on a GoPro Hero 3, so a Hero 6 with stabilisation would be much better. Now the string theory is an old dry land trick that photographers have been using for ages. By keeping the string tight, you add stability. You will still get off access issues with both the light and the camera, but I think it does a reasonable job. I clipped the GoPro to my BCD and my video light is clipped off inside my BCD pocket.
This shot is on the top of the Lonsdale Wall, just inside Port Phillip Bay. We're about 20 metres down. Now back inside the J4 submarine. Compare the footage of the tray. I think it's pretty similar. Obviously you need to use both hands to keep the string tight. Now I've unclipped the light and I'm using the POV pole to insert the GoPro into the ledge where the crayfish is. With the 19 inch long pole, I can get it pretty close to the cray. I've been watching this guy so long, I've created an air pocket above him. Okay, this is rough and ready. Blair Witch, here we come. When hunting crayfish, my main aim is to catch a cray. However, it's sometimes interesting to share what you've seen with others. I've taken the wrist strap off this wrist mount and I've cable tied it directly to the torch. The whole lot clips off to the BC. Hang on, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Hey look, selfie. We're 27 metres down looking for crays. Ooh, I've just seen a cray. I'm going to turn the light off and then film the cray. There it is. The torch acts like a tripod when I place the camera on the ground. It's all blind shooting. Sometimes it's good, other times you miss the action. And sometimes the cray just won't go in the bag. Another problem is, the light isn't a video light, it's a hunting spotlight. So you end up getting a bright hot spot in the middle of your video. Another cray? Where is this spot you ask? It's in the middle of the Port Phillip heads, the rip. What do they say? Let sleeping sharks lay. Here's another tripod shot with an old buddy coming out to play. We're down at 20 metres on a pretty dirty day. Well that's the four ideas. I like all methods, give them a go and see what you think, I hope it's helped.